Okay, so it's been a while since we're going to get right to it because we have a treat for you on the screen. Um, Richard Roper, will you please come out? And Nell Minow and Matt Zollerseis. They're going to be doing the Q&A. Hello, people. Hello, people. But I want to introduce you to the lovely, lovely actress who gave that beautiful performance. She's from Chicago. She won, uh, she was nominated for both a Golden Globe and an Academy Award for that performance. We have on the screen for you, hello, it's Virginia Matson. Oh, I see. Hi, Virginia. I, I forgot Is which it? way do we look. You know what I mean. Can, can you see us, Virginia? Hi, I don't know where to, which way do I look, guys? Can you? Yeah, can, but I'm only in. Can you hear us? I can't hear you, though. You, you can? Can you see us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chaz, I Hi. can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Oh, no. Hello, hello. Isn't this like the first time anybody ever FaceTime with their parents, you know, when they like first came <laughs> They turn the laptop sideways. And Why is it not happening? Do we have her? Do we have her? Text him and say we can't hear each other. Oh, they're, they're working on it, Chaz. Okay. You amazing woman. Oh, so, can you now hear? we got cut off. Are you kidding me? Can you hear me? No? I know, but I can't, oh man, this is a bummer. I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you um, text him? Text him and tell him I can't hear anything. Um, to but there you are. If you can hear me, you're amazing, Chaz. You are amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> I have... Oh, but you can't hear me. I have Richard Roper. You're incredible, and I'm so, so sad that I can't be there standing right next to you. Oh, I know. We wish you were here, standing here, but you're there. And we have, you know, can she see you in the chairs? Oh, no. Now we're cut off. Why is this happening? Come in, come. I don't know. Maya, whether... it's Miles. <laughs> Answer the door. <laughs> It's the black hole. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the black hole. Shut Dave, it. what are you doing, Dave? Open the pod bay door. Why don't we try to get her back? And, and she has, if, if somebody can hear us, if, if nothing else, if we get her back, maybe we can just ask Virginia to say something to everyone if, in case we can't, she can't hear us. You know us, what? If she, can't, if she can't hear us, will you at least stand up and wave so she can see you? Can she see them? Where, hey, will somebody give me some technical corner, advice? Where should we, where should Why don't we call her and put her on the speaker? Yeah, even if we could just where can, where should we stay? So I want her to see who's going to be doing the Q&A. Oh, she can see them. Okay, all right. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna start again. Absolutely, no problem. The miracle of technology. It's our best friend and our worst enemy, just like Miles is to himself in the movie. <laughs> well, in the intervening moment or two, why don't yeah, we just uh, talk, uh, talk a little bit. bit about the film? I just love to get uh, both of your impressions. That naked guy running down the street still still plays. <laughs> Put his hat on. Maybe you've seen some of my work. Can you imagine him? <laughs> yeah. I think that guy was on Sons of Anarchy or something like that. You know, I recognize. That's right, MC Ganey, right? I recognize the uh, the principal from Election uh, is in this movie. I love that guy. That guy's yeah. like the spirit of he's, Nebraska. He that is. Guy. He's absolutely wonderful. I love him in Election. People, yes. people. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know, this I had not seen this film for a few years. I'm just wondering when each of you could tell us the last time you saw it and kind of some impressions seeing it again tonight. I haven't seen it since it came out. Really. Yeah, oh, 2004. The, yeah, it was 2004 in the you know theaters, and uh, 
That was the first time that I think I saw Paul Giamatti in, as the lead, you know, in a movie. And I'd seen him in supporting performances and things. And the first thing I remember, he's been in a million things, but the first thing I remember him in was The Truman Show. Mm -hmm. Hey. Yes, Virginia, okay. you're in the Virginia Theater. Can you hear us now? Yes, yes. Hi. Can you oh, hear? I have to lean over here. here. Can, you, can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can, Chaz. Did you say, did you say yes? <laughs> can you see us? Can you see me? Oh, I'm watching you on the stage, and I'm so honored that you're there. And I'm so sad that I can't be there. My God, I am... I love you. You're such a wonderful woman. And I'm so, oh, I wish I could be there. Well, but you're here by, we know, I actually, I'm glad, you know why she can't be, she was going to be here. She's working and they had an extended work schedule that they had to extend to today. So otherwise oh, she yeah. had um, a plane uh, ticket. Yeah. She was I, on her way here. Yes, I had the okay to go after two months telling you guys, waiting to see if I could go. And then suddenly, strangely, we I have a 6 a.m. call on a Sunday. So I could not be with you, Chaz, and I'm so, oh, at the Virginia Theater of, I mean, can you yes. imagine? Oh, Virginia at the Virginia Theater, that's right, right. Um, do you have to stand so she can see you or? Oh, can you, can you see, um, we have Richard, oh. Richard Roper here. From oh, the Mr. Chicago. Roper. And I, I see all of you on the stage because the camera is pointed at you. Oh, okay. So I and we see have you. Matt, Matt Zoller Sice and Nell, yes. Min, Nell Minow, you know, from Chicago, you know, yes. Newt, Newt Minow's daughter. Yes, I yeah. see all of you. More important the than that. Virginia and I went to, we both went to New Trier. You both went to New Trier. Now yeah. Leno went oh. to New Trier as well. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> weird. I didn't even know that. It's well, you know, somehow when you come from the Midwest, it's like we're magnets. We all somehow find each other no matter where we are. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing that we end up in the same place, even though I'm not there with you, but. <laughs> you know what, Virginia, it was so wonderful seeing this movie again on this big screen. Your performance was so beautifully modulated. It was, you were, you were exquisite in this. And I know you got the nomination for the Golden Globe, for the Oscar. I really wish you could have been here with us, but what do you want to tell us about the making of Sideways? Oh, Chaz, I know that, you know, we've, we've talked about this before and talked about it many times with Roger. And first of all, I'm, I'm so grateful that you have carried the torch and you, You've done such wonderful things always in his name. And it means a lot to all of us. And I know it's very late at night, but I just want to thank you. And I think that everyone should applaud you for the festival that continues on. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the movie after this, but anyway, Roger was... <laughs> You know, we had to stay. We had to stay a little bit separate because he, you know, he was doing what he was doing, and I was doing what I was doing, and and he was always very honest about if he didn't like a movie I did. <laughs> but when he did like a movie I did, it meant the world. And when I filmed, in answer to your question 
when people have asked me about what it was like to film this movie, when you see the film, uh, when you see the scene, when we're all having a picnic up on the hillside and the sun is going down and there's something about the light in that part of the world in the Santa Inez Valley and the, the hills turn silver and gold and we had a picnic and the cameras were very far away and it was just beautiful. That scene was what it was like to shoot the movie. Virginia, I have to ask you about that beautiful speech that you make about Pino, uh, because it's such a wonderful contrast to the speech made by Miles. And so tell me a little bit about what you learned about, uh, about wine in making the movie and what you were what you brought to that speech, what you were thinking about, what your character, uh, how, what, how your character was revealed in that speech. Well, uh, I had been going to that part of the world for quite a long time. It was my sort of weekend getaway. And, um, and Alexander asked me not to look at you know, we did a little bit of rehearsal, um, but he asked me not to do it and not to look at it. Um, it was many weeks before we shot it because I think he knew that I'd be like doing it in the mirror and I'd be like practicing it. And he was like, I don't, I want you to put the script away and I don't want you to ever look at it again until we shoot it. And so I didn't, because he was such a good director that I knew that I should follow him. And so when it became this night shoot where we had the scene in Sandra's house, um, and we did that whole thing in one night um, with Thomas Hayden and... Um, and so it, it, we were at the very end of the evening, very early in the morning, like maybe 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. And he, well, I did it a couple of times. And Paul was so dreamy. Like when Paul works, you're like, oh. I mean, like everyone just, he's dreamy. Like he really is. And so when they turned around and they were doing my coverage, I did it two times and then, and then it was done. And Alexander said, I'd like to do it again. Oh, uh, oh cool. Yes, I'd like that. Um, what shall I do different? And he goes, it was so beautiful. I just want to hear it again. I can you imagine the courage you would feel as an actor? Like, oh, that's wonderful. And, and that was it. It was very simple. It was very simple and very beautiful. And when Paul and I walked away from the set, um, I, I just thought this was, this was so beautiful. And Paul looked at me and he was like, is it my imagination or is, was that kind of really easy? And I was like, yes, I don't know why. Do you think it was okay? And, and so just wondering for days if it was okay, but of course Alexander would know and, and we knew it was okay. <laughs> uh, Virginia, I have to ask you on a, on a little bit of a, a lighter note, if you will, there's a, there's so much wine drinking in this movie, and we know that, you know, <laughs> grape juice usually stands in for wine or iced tea for whiskey. Did you guys ever go method in any of the scenes and think, maybe we should have just a little touch of the grape? Well, no. <laughs> well, 
I'll tell you that if it's 7.30 or 6.30 in the morning, you really can't do the method thing. It's just, no. Um, but they had this fake wine. Like, I left um, while they were shooting, and I came back about three weeks later, and they had this fake wine. And I know I've told this story before, but uh, both Paul and Thomas were like, don't drink that. Uh, but I was like, but I can't. Anyway, there was a method of drinking wine without actually drinking it. But I thought, no, I'm going to drink the fake wine. And my, in my first scene in the movie, like when you see Maya at the bar and I had the fake wine and my teeth were dyed purple. No, I, I mean, I'm serious. Like, I thought, I'm, I'm going to lose my job because I can't drink this fake wine. So I, I, I drove back, like, I kind of kept my mouth closed. And I drove back, and I got, like, laser, you know, things to, to get rid of it. And because they said, like, you can't do that. And so... Thankfully, I, I lasered my teeth, and they were right. You cannot drink the fake wine. And so then they taught me how to drink the real wine so that you would... I'll do it right now. Will you bring me this? Okay. So here's what you do. Okay, this is real wine, because I was going to toast you guys at the end of the thing. Okay, so you, you have real wine, but you're like... Mm. you're not really drinking it. So they taught me how to do that, and it's still like, <laughs> you're not drinking it. I'll do it again. Mm. What an actress. <laughs> oh, I'm, now I'm actually going to drink it, as you will see. And I want to toast Chaz and Roger and all of you guys. I want to toast you for doing this beautiful screening. And I thank you again for watching this beautiful film. And now I'm actually going to really drink it. Now I'm actually drink it. And we toast you, Virginia. <laughs> tell us, tell us the project. Tell us what you're working on. Oh, I'm doing one of those DC Universe things, the Swamp Thing. I'm doing Swamp Thing, which is, oh, we don't have a Swamp Thing here, do we? No, we have Swamp Thing is like one of those really romantic uh, comic book characters, and. Uh, and I've been here in Wilmington, North Carolina, which has always been one of my favorite. Um, oh, wait a minute, here he is. Look at that. <laughs> is that the swamp thing? That, yes, swamp thing? That is swamp thing. And, and we're here with this really beautiful cast and one of the most extraordinary sets that I've ever seen them build. It's the largest set since Dune, if those of you who remember Dune. Um, it's the largest set I've ever seen anyone build. And it, 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 the swamp is so enormous that they can actually run boats on it. And Swamp Thing is one of these, you know, it's not unlike Candyman. Like, he's a really romantic, um, tragic superhero and and it's this beautiful thing and I'm working with Jennifer Beals and Will Patton and and and, and these really incredible young actors that I are, are like my children and so I'm I've been doing the whole season and having this extraordinary 
Oh, it's very rare that you get to have this kind of experience as an actor. And and so I'm I'm having a really nice time. But that's why I couldn't be with you. Because then everything got mixed up and suddenly we had to change and film on a Sunday. We understand. It's just good that you I I, I love seeing actors working and so we're really happy for you. I have a last question. Um, are you going to, Virginia and her mother, who is an extraordinary woman as well, <laughs> made a movie together. Are you going to, do you have any plans to do another movie with your mother? Or is your mother still doing her magazine or what? Yes, she's still doing Felix Magazine, and but she's mostly working with the actor studio in Los Angeles and the writer's unit which makes it really aggravating that I want her to do the next documentary with me. But, you know, you know, Chaz, like my mother is always like so busy and she's 85 now. And, and she, yeah, she <laughs> she's always like, well, I have this thing that I'm and and her play is being put up in Los Angeles. So she is she's working on her play. And so she she's like, well, if you come back to Los Angeles, maybe we'll discuss the documentary. <laughs> All right, that's a bet. Well, thank you so much, Virginia, for joining us tonight. Oh, and thank, thank you. you all. And thank you, Chaz, for making it. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> That damn swamp thing, that's what kept her from us. Eberfest 2020, swamp thing. How about it? Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't she? Virginia's just so, so lovely and, and so passionate and always has been uh, so close uh, to you and, and loved Roger so much and her, her mother as well. That was just really cool. And she's so awesome, too, isn't she? She's great. Why don't we take a couple of questions to wrap things yeah, up? Let's, today, yeah, let's do some, because this is our last, our last projection for the 2019 Ebert Fest. We want to hear, let's hear, doesn't even have to be about sideways. It could be about anything. Absolutely. Just We just want to hear from you before we go, before, and we'll see you next year. But uh, microphones out for a few questions. To wrap it up, question to your left, all the way back. Left, rear, okay. Un under the balcony. Right there. So, uh, just out of curiosity, did uh, does anyone know if Paul Giamatti actually drank out of the spit bucket? <laughs> oh. Oh. I just wondered too how many takes they had to do of that scene because that uh, you yeah. could just tell the wardrobe and props people going. We have five of these shirts, Paul. We have five of these shirts. So, um, and as Matt mentioned earlier, you know, he had Paul had been working for quite a while. I mean, he was, uh, you know, at private parts. He was the, you know, the program director from hell uh, to Howard Stern. Pink vomit. Uh, yeah, yeah, pink vomit, exactly. I was, I was but to starting, see him in a lead. I, yeah, I was starting to say. I saw the first thing I saw him in was uh, the Truman Show. He had a small part in that, and I and I was uh, I saw that at the screening room in New York City, and I was in the elevator on the way down, and Paul Giamatti was on the elevator. And I saw him, and I was like, that guy was in the movie. I didn't know his name. And I said, you were in the movie, weren't you? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> and I said, uh, you must have really liked it. It's like, why do you say that? And I said, because you're back to see it again. He's like, this is my first time seeing it. I said, what do you mean? What, you didn't you see it at the premiere? And he goes, <sighs> <laughs> Well, it's interesting. It's always interesting to see, I think, you know, people who kind of look like us in lead roles. And we love seeing beautiful people on the big screen. And I'll tell this story real fast, Chaz, that Roger used to tell when Roger and Gene first went national with their show. And, you know, until then, if you saw movie critics on TV, it was they usually looked like Ken, the second husband, you know, and they would just say, I give this four popcorn boxes or something like that. And he said when, it, when the show first was running in Los Angeles, uh, Harry Dean Stanton called Jack Nicholson and said, put on Channel 7. There's two guys who look like us talking about movies. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, we, have right we, here. Have a, we have a question right in front. 
front. Yeah, uh, my question, okay. My question is, do any of those places that they actually filmed that still exist, uh, like the wineries where we, I could actually go and visit and they say this is where Sideways was filmed, or like is the Windmill Motel, is that a real place, or is that a problem? I haven't checked into it recently, but I know that as, I know that as recently as five or six years ago, they were still doing Sideways tours. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case, they, but someone in the audience I don't know may if know. All, I don't know if all of the places right. exist, but as recently as even two years ago, uh, three years ago, you could still do some of those, go to some of those, and then absolutely. they called him the sideways yeah, tour. Yeah, that's absolutely one right, time. Chad. Yeah. The one, the one that obviously is fictional is the mediocre vineyard. No one would, you know, that is not a real vineyard. Like, yeah, sure, come do a movie about how our wine tastes like uh, motor oil. And it may not be the the same name as all the the wineries that you see in town, but th but those little towns that you go through, they all have uh, actually flourished after this movie. And do you all know where the title comes from? Uh, it's slang for being drunk, right? Yeah. And and the lore has it anyway. I don't know if they, you know, there's empirical evidence that sales of Pinot Noir did skyrocket. Oh, they Merlot, totally did. And Merlot totally did. plummeted. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Merlot, wow. <laughs> All right, we got a question right here in the center. Center. Uh, just a couple quick comments. One. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to our local art theater right around the corner where just a few months yes. ago I had the pleasure of seeing Virginia Madsen in Candyman on the big screen for the first oh, time great. since it came out. And second, Roger gave a big thumbs up to the first Swamp Thing. And when I was a kid, <laughs> originally watching him, what I loved about him as I was learning about film critique from him was that if he saw a rubber monster movie that he liked, he would not hesitate to tell you that he loved that rubber monster movie. <laughs> He loved the Swamp Thing, and even more so, he loved Adrian Barbeau in the Swamp yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true, I can attest to that. <laughs> and, and thanks, because we usually do mention the art theater every time, every year, so thank you for bringing up the art theater. Question? They're oh, all uh, about right here. A glass of wine, but we have one right here. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. Um, so I know you guys are critics, but um, do you have any advice for like aspiring filmmakers or pe people looking to get into the industry or anything like that? Well, the one thing, I'd say, if you're talking about people who want to get into the filmmaking side of thing, advice, I mean, the one thing I'd say that we've all seen change so much is that back in the day, if you wanted to get into movies, you had to try to figure out a way to beg, borrow or steal equipment and all of that and now you have a full movie studio in your pocket with your phone. And I would say, you know, obviously you want to study and you want to learn technique and you want to watch the greats and, and all of that, but you can really make your own movies now, you know, with your phone, with your friends. And we've seen, obviously, also even some, you know, top directors have done that. So I, that's, that's the way to get, you know, go out there and do it. It's like when people talk about writing, I want to write. And I'm like, what's holding you back? Yeah, yeah, so, and good luck to you. Yeah. And if you're local, you have now the new course at the University of Illinois uh, doing the production and post-production stuff. And you also have a great resource in this community, Shatterglass Films, Shatterglass Studios. They do great work. They teach courses. They have, um, they exhibit work by locals. They get a lot of work in Chicago and other places because they're so good and they're so disciplined and they're so talented. So I would say, look up some of your local resources as well. The interstitial films that the university did, that the students here did, that we've been seeing uh, for the whole festival have been stunning. I think they've been absolutely brilliant. And also the demonstration that they had of, of, the, the, virtual of the virtual reality. Those were incredible. And I asked if I could see the camera that they used because I thought it must be some, you know, huge, complicated thing. It's a GoPro. Yeah. So, hey, go for it. Mm -hmm. That might Question. be a nice note to, to wrap things up, unless we have some. Oh, we have, yep, we we have one, some more. Okay, right one more. Okay, please. Yeah. Right, one more, it, please. It's not a question. I just wanted to get a chance to say this. Uh, for Richard, my first, uh, the first review I ever saw you do with Ebert was for Ghost of Mars. And from there, I was always hooked. Um, Matt, uh, the video essays you did on Michael Mann for Moving Image Source were 
it's still some of the best stuff I've ever seen. I would constantly re revisit them. And I just want to thank everyone on stage and for your contributions to Eberfest and film criticism. And I just wanted to get the chance to thank you all. Thank you. Very, very thank, you. thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. A nice way to end. And thank you, everybody, see you for next supporting year. us. Thanks, and we'll see you next year. Yeah.